Overcome destructive thoughts with your writing. Have you ever sat down and really contemplated what was genuinely on your heart? There's a scripture that says, as a man think of, so is he. And I believe for 2024, uh, one of the ways that you can confront and overcome destructive thoughts is writing down what's on your heart. Uh, I'm Robert Laurie. I'm author of the book, Think Up to Get Up, How to Break Free from Destructive Ways of Thinking. Hope you're having a blessed 2024. And I want to come on here to help you come up with a, a, a thought process or a game plan of how to start writing down your thoughts and emotions, not just to go through a, a process of healing, but also potentially helping impact others. So why do I want to talk about this? Writing has really changed my life. I started writing. I, man, I wish... I, if I could say probably around 2013, 2014, uh, I got serious about writing probably around about 2017. Uh, when I started writing my book, I work in the automotive industry. I sell cars for a living, work at a Lexus dealership over in Central Florida. And I began writing my book as I was working in the industry. The main thing that I struggled with uh, is I didn't know how to write, didn't know how to communicate, didn't believe in my ideas. I thought what I wanted to share could not help people. But by the grace of God, as I push through as I wrote down my ideas, my thoughts every day, I became better as a communicator. I began seeing how my thoughts and ideas can help other people because they were helping me. One of the main things that I believe writing can help you when it comes to overcoming destructive thoughts is by helping you get clarity on what you're actually thinking. Most of us go through life strolling on social media, looking at other people's lives, looking at what what's going to happen tomorrow or what happened with somebody else. But we rarely think about what's going on with us, what's going on with what's on our heart. You have to have the courage to confront your fears and insecurities. For example, me, for example, I do not like social media, but 2024, y'all, I'm going to be coming making these videos like crazy. Why? Because I know this is the next stage of my growth and my development, and I'm not going to dare sit back and be passive about my vision and my purpose that God uh, blessed me with just because of fear or insecurity. We all got to confront it. So with that being said, I want to talk about overcoming destructive thoughts with your writing. Number one point I want to share. Okay. How can writing help your thoughts? You may be saying, how can writing help your thoughts? Number one, writing helps you get clarity on what's on your mind. As I help people, and y'all, I've been helping people for the past couple of years about how to, uh, with writing a book, ghostwriting, things of that nature. The main thing that I find with people who want to share their story, whether they want to write about their experience, want to write a memoir, or you're a, a, a doctor or a business professional, want to write about uh, some type of principle that can help people. The main thing that I find is people struggle with a lack of clarity. You are not clear in what you want to communicate. You want to bunch a, a, a lot of ideas into one book. Listen, you got to get clarity. So one of the ways writing can help you overcome your destructive thoughts is getting clear on what you're actually thinking. Write down, how do you feel? Don't just say, I feel, I feel sad. Okay, write that down. Now write down why. Number two, uh, just different writing prompts that can help you just get to the core of why do you feel the way you feel, y'all? So many people, I believe, especially men, we get this bad rap of not being emotionally uh, mature or emotionally incompetent. And it's not because we are not emotional. It's because I do believe it is cultural that we suppress our emotions. I thank God for my dad. My dad passed away in 2018. Uh, my dad did the best he could to uh, be there for his family after the death of his daughter. She died at six years old before I was born. And uh, I didn't realize it when I was growing up, my dad was raising us, but I realized it as I got old and had kids for myself, that that was a major transformation to overcome that loss. And I believe many times as we overcome losses, as we overcome uh, and confront different things that happen in our life, uh, we become emotionally repressed or we suppressed how we feel. We are told to just be strong, to push through it. To uh, and, then, and then those of us who are Christians, we put scriptures on top of it. You know, uh, let the Lord fight your battles. You know, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. And I believe these are shared with good intentions. But I also believe that if you don't courageously 
and fearlessly confront how you feel. Even if you wrong, you cannot grow emotionally, spiritually, financially. Why? Because you have to be genuinely honest with yourself. That is one of the things writing helps you do. It helps you be honest with yourself. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. If you angry, you angry. Write down, why are you angry? Don't try to suppress it and be like, oh, the Bible says be angry uh, be angry and don't sin, so I'm not going to confront my anger. No, I'm angry because of this. Y'all, when my dad passed, I was very angry that my dad wasn't here. And I didn't realize how angry I was until about three or four years later after I started working out. And a lot of my anger started coming out in the gym as I was exercising. Didn't realize that. There's another point. You got to put yourself in environments that helps you grow, that forces you to grow, that forces the best out of you. Even the people you listen to on social media, allow it to be people that's pouring into you, that's empowering you, that's putting something in you that can help you go to your next level. Everything I'm sharing, y'all, these are just principles that I wish I would have known when I was uh, in my 30s or late 20s. Because when I started writing, for example, I didn't take my writing serious. I looked at writing as something that wasn't for me because I didn't like to read. I wasn't an author. I didn't think my ideas were valuable. I didn't have no prestigious uh, 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 place uh, in, 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 you know, in the world. I'm not pastor. I didn't see myself as a big name. And that suppressed me. How you see yourself will suppress your growth. You got to allow, man many times we limit ourselves not because of others we limit ourselves because how we're choosing to see ourselves we see ourselves as insignificant uh, uh incompetent uh we man and, and, and it's so normal to do so i'm not i don't i don't want you to get discouraged we, we all do it but you have to press through and be all god is calling you to be anyway uh man i'm just on point number one point number two Writing forces you to identify your current emotional state. I believe to become more emotional uh, mature, you got to be able to identify genuinely how you feel emotionally. I don't care if it's right or wrong. I think us, uh, 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 you know, in our culture, uh, it's very common to not deal with the negative feelings that you may have. Uh, jealousy, envy, rage, insecurity, doubt. Uh, it's so easy to suppress these emotions because they can lead to you uh, uh, making bad decisions. But just because an emotion can lead to making a bad decision, don't make the mistake of assuming that is the reason why you should not deal with that emotion. You need to deal with it. If you don't trust somebody, for example, and it's somebody you should trust, a spouse or you know, a business partner, you not communicating that ain't going to help your relationship. Why am I saying that? It's more healthier to deal with that emotion and talk about it. Now, you may talk about it and that person may leave you or that business partnership may break up. Do you think you're worse off? It's better for you to be around people who are for you than to see signs that people ain't for you and you don't say nothing because you're fearful they may walk away. You'll be better off without those people. I, one of my favorite movies is Gladiator. My wife, she always, you know, huffs and puffs. I don't watch it so many times. And on Netflix, they put it back up. So I've been, I watched it again. But the part where uh, that was Maximus. The part where Maximus, the king, sees who he really is, and he didn't know it, because the king was starting to admire Maximus in the movie. You gotta go see it. It's an old movie, but he was starting to admire Maximus. But when he seen that it was the person he thought was dead, that was that's one of my favorite parts in the movie. Why? Hmm. Because many times in life, to get to your next level. There's going to be people who ain't going to be for you. Now, you can think and act in agreement with what they see or think of you, or you can act in agreement with what God sees in you. You get to choose. Now, if you choose the way that is detrimental to your growth, take responsibility of that bad choice and don't attempt to blame it on others. 
I'm bringing that up, y'all, because in 2024, this is a year for growth. This is a year of prosperity, not just financially, but you spiritually, emotionally. You got to take responsibility of your life emotionally. Many of us, especially us in the body of Christ as Christians, we are poor emotionally, but claim to be spiritual giants. There's a book by Peter uh, Scazzaro uh, called The Emotional Healthy Leader. And, he's, and he has a quote in that book that sums up his whole book, uh, which is, you cannot be spiritually mature and emotionally immature. Deal with your emotions by writing about it. Now, you may not like writing. Writing may not be for you. Get therapy. Connect with somebody you love. But we have too many resources to be so emotionally poor. So for 2024, allow God to make you whole by going through the process of becoming whole. By number one, writing about your emotions. Number two, connect with somebody who you love, somebody who pours into you, not just somebody you like or you are comfortable with. You may need to you may need to get with somebody who you know can help you emotionally or spiritually. Uh, this is not a year to be comfortable. This is a year of action. So I pray this video help y'all, and I will see y'all next time. God bless.